What if we could take a vacation cruise around the galaxy? <clears throat> now, I know that may seem like a far-fetched idea, but it's a real possibility in the near future for us. Um, so today we're going to be talking about some of the possibilities, uh, the future plans, and some of the criticisms of the space tourism industry at the moment. Um, <clears throat> so this could be a start of a new era for us, um, and it has been on the brink for some time. But I think it's important to be aware of where we're at with it, uh, just because of the drastic changes to our world that could be coming. So my name is Will Trevitt. Um, I'm a business major here at Columbus State, and I've taken a keen interest in the companies and the progress that they've been making uh, in their pursuit of commercial space tourism. We're going to look at, uh, like I already said, um, the different possibilities, the future plans, and some of the criticisms that people have. So let's start with some of the recent advancements, um, kind of where we're at in the current market with the space tourism industry. Uh, we are in the innovation phase um, and the implementation phase, as Ken Davidian put it in his article titled New Space. Um, he referred to it as a proto-market. Uh, which means that there's not really any supply or demand yet. Um, these companies are seeking to get to that point, um, and the advancements have been significant, but it has taken um, longer than expected. Uh, there's three main companies involved. It's Amazon's Blue Origin, uh, which is founded by Jeff Bezos, there's SpaceX, which is founded by Elon Musk of Tesla. And there is Virgin Galactic, which is founded by uh, Richard Branson. Um, all these companies have had successful test flights um, with Virgin Galactic has been selling tickets for over a decade now, um, anticipating that they would be uh, taking commercial flights by now. Um, and everybody's just had really significant delays um, in getting over that last hurdle. Uh, so let's look at what these companies are actually trying to accomplish. Um, they have different goals. Um, as Catherine Schwab said um, in an article for fastcompany.com, uh, she talked about the differences and, you know, Amazon's Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic are seeking to accomplish suborbital space tourism, which basically means getting right to the brink of uh, where you could experience some weightlessness and have some pretty cool views, um, but it wouldn't be actually into outer space. Uh, so they're looking at 80 to 100 miles up in the atmosphere. Um, and SpaceX is actually seeking to accomplish orbital uh, flights. So that is one difference. Um, and a lot of these companies are looking past tourism uh, with SpaceX being particularly interested in the colonization of Mars. Um, Blue Origin has a focus particularly on uh, just taking up residence outside of planet Earth at some point. Um, and Virgin Galactic right now is mainly more focused on the space tourism aspect. Um, but that is one difference. And I think they all realize that it is potentially just a stepping stone. Um, so this is all really exciting. Um, but let's talk about some of the criticisms that people have of the space tourism industry. Um, a big one is the current prices and the outlook of those prices. Um, Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic are both in the above $200,000 per ticket right now, which like I already said, Virgin Galactic has been selling tickets for over a decade now. Um, and Blue Origin is uh, planning a flight in July. Uh, so they've been selling tickets for that. Um, and a lot of people have problems with the fact that it's so inaccessible um, because they just don't think that's a good look for nobody to be able to get to it. Um, a lot of people on the other side of that are saying, you know, that every major advancement in technology we've ever had started out as 
uh, a commodity of the extremely wealthy, such as airline travel. So, um, and along with that, people criticize the temporary nature of the industry uh, with how, you know, people are viewing it as a stepping stone uh, to get to the eventual coloni colonization of uh, Mars or anywhere outside of Earth. Uh, so they view it as temporary. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if any of this is accomplished, much less if it's affordable. Um, so as we conclude, uh, let's just go back over kind of what we've talked about with the criticisms uh, just of the prices and the temporary nature of the industry. Uh, we've looked at the different goals that each of these companies have, um, whether that be suborbital travel versus outer space orbital travel, um, and where they're at in regards to tourism versus using the industry as a stepping stone, um, and just kind of the current state of the industry being uh, an innovative proto market, um, and it's certainly a niche market right now. Um, so I hope we all realize the possibilities that this brings for our future um, and the imminence of uh, these significant advancements and changes in the way um, that space tourism is available to us. Yeah, thanks.